At this time, it's my pleasure to yield the balance of our time to the gentleman from South Carolina, the chairman of the Immigration and Border Security Subcommittee, Mr. Gowdy, to close our debate. The gentleman from South Carolina is recognized to close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank Chairman Goodlatte for his leadership on this and so many other issues of significance on the Judiciary Committee. His steady hand and brilliant legal mind uh, are without equal on our committee. Mr. Speaker, I also want to thank the family of Kate Steinle for the grace that they have shown uh, during this time of unspeakable grief. Bearing a child, Mr. Speaker, is what each of us who has ever been called mom or dad fears the most. After Trayvon Martin was killed, the president said that could have been my son, Mr. Speaker. And when I see a picture of a beautiful Kate Steinle smiling, that could have been any of our daughters. And it still can be because what happened to her, Mr. Speaker, can and will happen again if we do not get serious about enforcing the law. Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez, Mr. Speaker, had a quarter century's worth of lawlessness. Dating back to 1991, he committed local, state, and federal crimes. He was in five separate states, I hasten to add, Mr. Speaker, who supported five times and each time had so little regard for the law of this country that he reordered, he re-entered that border that we are supposed to have functional control over. His procedural history, Mr. Speaker, is every bit as disturbing in May of 2011. This defendant was convicted and sentenced to 46 months imprisonment for illegal re-entry again. At the conclusion of that sentence, he was released from the Bureau of Prisons to a known sanctuary jurisdiction for the ostensible prosecution of an old drug case. Now, of course, Mr. Speaker, San Francisco did not prosecute that old drug case. They dismissed it, which surprises exactly no one. And then they released this defendant. They did not return him to the Bureau of Prisons. They did not return him to federal probation. They did not honor the detainer that had been placed by ICE. They released him who was not supposed to be in the country in the first place with this horrific criminal history. They released him so he would be free to walk around and shoot someone's daughter, which is exactly what he did. And Mr. Speaker, we are given a litany of excuses. I've, I've heard them this morning, Mr. Speaker, for policies like this. We're told that we need policies like the one in San Francisco so people will cooperate with law enforcement. I want you, Mr. Speaker, to consider just how utterly illogical that comment is. We need to release known criminals back into society so society will help us catch known criminals. How absurd is that, that we're going to release people that should be deported, that are recidivist felons? So other people will help, you, help us catch those who should be deported and are recidivist felons. For almost five years, Mr. Speaker, I have worked alongside Chairman Goodlad, and I have heard a litany of phrases with almost catatonic frequency, as if repeating something enough will make it true. Phrases, Mr. Speaker, like, functional control over the border, but I've yet to hear how somebody can re-enter five times if you have functional control over the border. I've heard we need citizenship for 11 million undocumented aspiring Americans, as if 11 million of any category can pass a background check. I've heard arguments against empowering state and local law enforcement to assist in the enforcement of our immigration laws, Mr. Chairman. Now stop and think, we trust them to do murder cases, sex assault cases, kidnapping cases, narcotics trafficking. You even trust them to provide security, Mr. Speaker, at their own functions back in the district. But when it comes to immigration law, oh no. No, sir, we don't trust you to enforce immigration law. Everything else, including our own security, both here in Washington and back in the district. But God forbid we trust state and local cops to help us with immigration law. The president says we need immigration reform. So folks will, to use his words, Mr. Chairman, come forward, get on the books, 
get right with the law. And I want you to ask yourself, what in Mr. Lopez Sanchez's background makes you think he would ever come forward? And why in the hell does he need to be on the books? He's in the Bureau of Prison. You don't need him on the books. He's in the Bureau of Prisons. And you had him, and you let him go. Which brings me to my favorite phrase, Mr. Speaker. Sanctuary cities. It has almost a utopian sound to it, doesn't it? Well, as the speaker knows, the definition of sanctuary is a place of refuge or safety. And my question for folks in San Francisco and my colleagues who support this policy is a refuge for whom? A sanctuary for whom? A refuge for Kate Steinle? A sanctuary for Kate Steinle? Or a refuge for a convicted felon with a 25-year-long criminal history? So the phrase sounds benign, but it was no sanctuary for her. It may have been for him, but it sure as hell wasn't for her. Mr. Speaker, my message to San Francisco would be simple. You won't honor our detainers. We won't honor your warrants. If detainers are too much trouble for you to handle, perhaps federal money will be too much trouble for you to handle, too. If you can't honor our detainers, you're not going to get any more money. The gentleman's time has expired. All